Okay, so uh, first off, classifying a triangle by its sides. So um, when all three sides of a triangle are um, congruent, that is called an equilateral triangle. Okay, lateral means sides or a side. So equal sides, right? Uh, you can think of it that way, okay? When two of the three sides are um, congruent, then that is an isosceles triangle. Okay, and when all three sides um, are different lengths, none of them are congruent, that is called a scalene triangle, okay? So every triangle in the world is going, and in the universe actually, is gonna fit into one of these three categories. Okay, so that's one way to classify triangles, but you can also classify a triangle by its angles. Okay, so um, if you this first triangle that I've got drawn here is supposed to represent an acute triangle, and that just means that all three um, angles are acute. Okay, and I we don't know the measures of these angles. Um, but um, it's pretty clear they're all less than 90 degrees. Just looking at them, they look, look less than 90 degrees, okay? If you've got um, um, just one obtuse angle, let's say that this angle, I, I don't know what it actually is, but let's just say that this angle at the, at the top here is 100 degrees. Well, that's, it, it looks like it's more than 90 degrees, right? Probably looks more than 100. But anyways, just one obtuse um, um angle gives you an obtuse triangle. Okay, and you can actually only have one obtuse angle in a triangle. That's the maximum number and we'll get to that later in the lesson, but okay. And then if you've got one right angle, then you've got a right triangle. And again, you can only have one right angle in a triangle. Okay. And then if all three of the um, angles are congruent, then this is called equiangular. Okay, and it just so happens, if these are all, um, if you've got an equiangular triangle, it's going to be equilateral. So all equiangular triangles are equilateral. All equilaterals are equiangular. It works out that way. And there's a theorem about that later on. Um, but yeah, this also would qualify as equilateral. And all of those angles are going to be 60 degrees if they're all um, congruent as well. And we'll get into that later too. But that means if all of these angles are 60 degrees, they're all acute. So this also qualifies as an acute triangle. It's a special type of acute triangle where all the three angles are congruent. Okay. All right, so there's our different ways to, me to uh, classify by angles, all right? Um, all right, so yeah, be really careful in the questions when it asks you to classify because does, is it asking you for a side classification or an angle classification, okay? Um, all right, so um, let's look at this example. We've got a, um, a triangle on the coordinate plane, and we're going to try to decide um, what type of triangle it is based on its side. So these are our three options, equilateral, isosceles, or scalene. So what I need to do is to check the lengths of the three sides. Okay, So um, I can use the um, distance formula to do that. Okay, Now, just visually, I, I'm pretty confident that this side is not going to be congruent to the other two because it looks much shorter. Okay, so um, I, I could um, test that with the um, test this side with the um, distance formula, but just in the interest of time, I'm just going to do these two sides because they look like they could be congruent. They look about the same length, so let's test them out. So when I'm looking at A B, um, let's use the distance formula here. Okay, and distance formula, you're going to subtract the x-coordinates and square, subtract the y-coordinates and square. You add those results together and take the square root of the whole thing. Okay, so for this particular, let's see, the x's, I'm going to do 7 minus 0 for my x's. 
And for the y's, I'll do 1 minus 3. Okay, and then let's see. It's going to give me 7 squared and negative 2 squared. Okay, and this is going to come out to the square root of 53. Now, I could get a decimal approximation, but I'm really just comparing it to this other side. So, here, I'll put this other one over here. Okay, so I've got root 53, so yeah, I can put it in the calculator, but I just want to see if I get the same thing out for BC or something else. Um, so let's see. Let's uh, use the distance formula again here. Okay, so for my x is 7 minus 1. And for my y's, this would be 1 minus negative 1. Oops, minus negative 1 squared. Okay, so this gives me 6 squared, and this would be 1 plus 1 in here, so 2 squared. Okay, and I got the square root of 40 out here. So now I know that these two sides are not congruent. Okay, so I'm marking them not congruent. And just a spoiler alert, if you did the distance formula, neither that, that one's going to come up to something different than root 40 or root 43. Okay, but just it's really obvious from the picture that that one's not congruent. So now I know that this is, uh, is, is scalene. There is my classification by the sides. Okay, and then we've got another um, question here. Is this a right triangle? Okay, so um, I'm going to use, uh, again, in the interest of time, I, um, I'm really looking at that picture, and it's assuming this, this is a, an accurate picture here. Um, but I'm just going to go based on looks. If this is a, a right triangle, my right angle would have to be right here. That's the only one that looks like it could possibly be 90 degrees. Clearly, both of these angles are acute. Okay, now I'm doing that based on looks. So I could test all of the angles. But what I'm going to do just in the interest of time is test this angle down here, angle C. So what I want to check is angle C a right angle if it is then I've got myself a right triangle if it's not it's not going to be a right triangle okay so the answer to this question is going to be the same as the answer to is that a right triangle at all so what I can do I can those two orange lines I can test the slopes of both of those okay so if I look at AC I'm going to use the slope formula here. So I'm subtracting my y's in the numerator, subtracting my x coordinates in the denominator. Okay, so let's see what happens here. Um, I'm going to do 3 minus negative 1 for the, my y's, and I'm going to do 0 minus 1 for my x's. So that'd be 3 plus 1 on top, it's 4. So I got negative 4 for the slope here, okay? And what I want to do now is check the slope of this line. So if these are opposite reciprocals, then they would be perpendicular lines, and that would mean I would have a right angle. So I'm thinking, well, what's the opposite reciprocal of negative 4? Well, I flip the fraction upside down and change the sign. So it would be positive 1 fourth. So if I come out with positive 1 fourth for BC, then I've got a right angle. If I get anything else, it's not a right angle, and therefore I don't have a right triangle. Okay, so again, let's check the slope here. Okay, for my y's, 1 minus negative 1. And for my x's, 7 minus 1. That's going to reduce to 1 third. So those are not opposite reciprocals. So my, uh, my answer here is going to be no. It's not a right triangle. You could test again the slopes on those other two. I'm just, in the interest of time, it's really clear they're not right angles. But you could test it by looking at the slope of AB as well. Okay. All right, moving on to the next page.
So um, we're going to move on to something called the triangle angle sum theorem. And that's going to talk about what the, the uh, sum of the measures of the three angles of any triangles, uh, triangle is. So um, before I get to those notes, I've got this beautiful triangle that I prepared ahead of time. Okay. Um, so let me show you something. I've marked the, um, the angles, angle A, B, and C. And now I'm going to destroy my beautiful triangle here. It's a little sad, but there will be other triangles, and it's going to be worth it. Okay, so I'm going to rip the three corners off. Okay, there's my destroyed triangle. Um, so now what I'm going to do is put the three angles together like a puzzle. So I'm going to put the, uh, the straight edges together and put the corners all meeting in one place. And look at that, they form a, I just cut this off of a edge of a piece of paper, but they form a straight line there. And that's not a coincidence. That's going to happen every single time. So these three angles together, they're not a linear pair because there's three of them, but they're, I guess you could call them a linear triple. So all three of those together form a straight line, so when I add up the three angles, it's going to be 180 degrees. This is just a random triangle that I made. So you can do this with any triangle in the universe. So I would recommend next time you're going to a party, bring some triangles. I always bring some triangles. Um, then you can uh, you know, amaze your friends, um, show them how any triangle you can get 180 degrees with the sum of the three angles. Okay, so that brings us to the triangle angle sum theorem. So for any triangle ABC, and you know these could be any any uh, letters, but um, for the names of the angles, but it's going to add up to 180 degrees. The, the measures of the three is always 180 degrees. That means anytime we know two of the three angles in a triangle, we can find the third one. All right, so in this example here, I can say x degrees plus 100 degrees plus 32 degrees is going to equal 180 degrees. Combine like terms here. Okay, and then I'll subtract 132. And then x is going to come out to 48. Okay, now I'm not, not actually putting the degree symbol in my answer here because it's already in the picture there, right? So it's just the number that goes in there. So x equals 48, okay? And there is the triangle angle sum theorem in action. Okay, so that's, when we say triangle angle sum theorem, we're talking about the interior angles. These angles are all inside the triangle, but we also have a triangle exterior angle sum theorem. Okay, so let's look at that next, okay? So the sum of the exterior angles of any triangle is always, I don't want to give it away yet. So let's look at this example, okay? So um, an exterior angle is an angle, if you extend one of the lines at a corner, like right up here at the 60 degree angle, this is an exterior angle. Okay, and since I know that this is 60 degrees and I've got a linear pair right here, I know that's a total of 180 degrees there. So that means I can find the measure of this angle. It's going to be 120 degrees, okay? Now let's look at the other corners. Hey, they're all 60 degree angles. So this would be 120 degrees in the same way. And this would be 120 degrees as well. So I've got three different exterior angles um, in this picture. So let's see what we get. Okay, so that's going to be the sum of the exterior angles, and hey, that's going to come out to 360 degrees. Okay, so 360 degrees, that's a very familiar number, right? So let's uh, try this next example here. Okay, this one's not um, equiangular, this is a different triangle, but I can still find the measure at all of these corners of these exterior angles because I've got linear pairs in all three positions. So 100 plus something is 180, that would have to be 80 degrees, okay? And then um, 34 degrees plus something is going to be 180. 
Um, so that's going to be uh, 146. Okay. And then 46 plus one something is 180. That would be 134. Okay. And let's find the sum here then. So I'm going to add together those three exterior angles. Okay, and that's all going to come out to 360 degrees again. Okay, and this pattern is going to continue for all time with all triangles if you find the measure of all three exterior angles or an exterior angle at all three corners. The sum of those three is going to be always 360 degrees. Okay. All right. All right, moving on. Now we've got something called the remote interior angles sum theorem. So um, first off, I want to talk about what a remote interior angle is. Okay. So um, these two angles, where A and B are, these are going to be interior angles because the angle A and B are actually inside the triangle, right? These are interior angles, but they're remote interior angles in relationship to angle C. Okay, And what I mean by, if you think about the word remote, remote, you know, if you've got a remote island, it's far away from the rest of civilization, right? So these are the two angles inside the triangle that are farther away from angle C, okay? Angle C is an exterior angle, okay? All right. And so um, the way this is going to work um, is that if you take two remote interior angles and you add them together, it will equal the, um, the, the measure will be equal to the measure of the exterior angle, the angle that it's far from, okay? All right, so the remote interior angles sum theorem, this says for any triangle ABC, Oh, sorry, I was writing. That's the wrong one. My bad. I'll just use, I won't say for any triangle ABC, because it depends which ones are the remote interiors. Sorry, what I was uh, rewriting the old theorem. So what I meant to say is the measure of those two um, remote interior angles will be equal to the measure of the exterior angle that they're remote from, okay? So that gives me a little shortcut on this next problem. These are my two remote interiors. If I add them together, it'll equal x. Now there is another way to do this. I could take this angle, this angle right here and find it, and then it's going to be a linear pair right there, right? So there's another way around that, but that's going to take an extra step. I can just say x here is going to equal 100 plus 50, and then x equals 150. Okay, and that saves me some time. Again, I didn't put the degree symbol because it's already in the picture, right? It's just the number I'm plugging in there. Um, so, um, if I, you know, like I was saying, I could have found this angle and then used this linear pair, and that works sometimes, but that's not going to work here because I don't have a way, if I just do this, I, on this problem, I don't have a way to find this angle. I only know one of the angles in this triangle. I don't know what this angle is going to be. Don't assume it's going to be 70 degrees or X. I don't know. I just don't have enough info. But I do have enough info to say, oh, these are remote interior angles, so if I add them together, it should equal 2x plus 4. So I can say x plus 70 is going to equal 2x plus 4. And now looking at this equation, I've only got one variable, so I should be able to solve this for x. So let's subtract x from both sides. And then I'll, I'll subtract 4 and x is going to come out to 66. Okay, and there's my solution, and that's the end of the section. I will see you next time.